and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's exalt him in this place. Let's magnify him. Let's make his name great. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And he does good to all. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, we are here tonight for another dose of our inoculation. Amen. We are here to be vaccinated against fear, vaccinated against sickness and disease. Hallelujah. We're going to feed on the word some more and drive fear right out of our lives, right out of our thoughts, right out of our mouths in the name of Jesus. And we're going to walk out of this room strong, knowing that our God will do great exploits for us. Amen. He has freed us, redeemed us. Hallelujah. From the oppression of the evil one. And he cannot inflict us with anything in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we welcome you in this house. We declare that you are a good God and a great God. And we, your people, are ready to hear from you tonight, oh God. Speak through our man of God. We thank you for him, Father God. We thank you for that gift, Lord. Hallelujah. That's declaring your truths, your realities to us, oh God. Oh, we're thanking you, Father God, that tonight you've made him strong body soul and spirit hallelujah god and as he's gone into your word and labored in your word and extracted revelation for us tonight oh we declare tonight that we are good ground father god so we're saying speak through him speak through him oh god we your people will hear we will receive we will apply it and we will live the victorious life that you caused us to live called us to live god we honor you in this place so god we're asking right now Oh, that you be magnified, that you be exalted in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now shout unto God like you're ready to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Hallelujah. name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God a praise in this place tonight, in this place. Come on, exalt him tonight, in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, do what? Do better. Come on, give God a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. We glorify you in this place, oh God. We magnify you, our King. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Come on, say it. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome. I got it now. Come on. Oh, you are awesome. Mighty God. Mighty God. You are awesome in this. You are awesome. Abba Father. Abba Father. You are worthy. You are worthy. To you our lives. To you our lives. Say it. Come on, till we get it. Come on. You are awesome. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father. You are awesome. Abba Father. Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of. To you our lives we raise. To you our lives. You are awesome. You are awesome. Come on, let's say it again. Oh, you are awesome in this place. My. Oh, you are awesome. Abba Father. Abba 
are worth. To you are like the same thing right now. Every nation doing the same thing. Everybody doing the same thing. They have plans. But your Bible says that the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. So everything the devil's got planned against all of us, against all these people, God's going to crush it all right now. He's going to get himself some glory in this earth before Jesus Christ returns. Verse 11, verse 11, watch this. Why? This is what I love. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart. So while, the, while everybody's looking at Corona, and the devil's working his, his scheme over here, God's still got a master plan that those of us who have an ear, those of us who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, we're not looking at what Corona's doing over here. We're not looking at what the devil's doing over here. We're looking at what God is doing right here. Are y'all hear what I'm saying to you? That's why I'm not caught up in what Corona's doing. I, I, I'm not keeping count of the numbers anymore. I don't, I'm not, I'm not. It's a distraction. Not keeping up with what all the governments are doing is a distraction. It's, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Y'all got it? Oh, my goodness. All right, let me hurry. Man. Give me verse 12, please, uh, in the easy-to-read version. I want you to see these rulers of darkness, this power. Ephesians, yeah, Ephesians 6, please, verse 12 in the easy-to-read version. Glory to God. Everybody say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is, this, is, this is just good, man, what God is doing uh, for his people. Hallelujah. All right. It says here, our fight is not against people on earth. We are fighting against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this world's darkness. We are fighting against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly places. We're fighting against them, which means we are on opposing sides, which means we've been already delivered from the power of that darkness. We are fighting them to rid others from their power. That's why, that's why we're, we're meeting tonight. That's why Apostle Derber is preaching every night till they open them doors of their church. That's why the real men and women of God aren't sitting there playing stupid games on the internet. And trying to entertain folk every day, reading baby stories and mukbangs and all that kind of stupid stuff. No, they're preaching the gospel, getting a prophetic utterance from God, speaking what does it the Lord, so people can be delivered from the power of darkness today. Spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly places. Give me the same verse, please, media, in the Passion Translation. Same verse in the Passion. Let's see what it says to us here in the Passion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings. Hand-to-hand. -hand. Y'all know a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Throw them hands. Y'all remember we used to throw them hands. See, that, today they don't, throw, they don't throw no hand to hand. They bang, bang, bang. Back in the day, we just throw them hands. Your hand to hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realm. For Watch this, watch this. This is, what, this is what I want you to see. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. So we try to figure out, why are people going crazy? What, what are they doing? People killing, you know, their own children and people, you know, doing horrific things. What? They're under uh, this powerful class of demon gods that are holding them in bondage. 
and they, they cannot be freed except somebody go to battle. That's what you're here for. Are y'all hearing this? All right, Luke 22 real quick. Luke 22, 53. Give it, give it, give it to me in the uh, CEV for sake of time. Luke 22, 53 in the CEV. Jesus talking. I just want you to see this here. Man. Jesus said to uh, the people there, he says, I was with you every day in the temple and you didn't arrest me, but this is your time and darkness is in control. King James, New King James, it says the power of darkness. But what I want you to see with that, the power of darkness means that darkness is in control. Yeah. That's what's controlling the atmosphere. Right. That's what's controlling all the airwaves. Right. That's what's controlling the internet. Yeah. Darkness is in control. Yeah. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Now, the word power means from the dictionary, possession of control, authority, or influence over others. That's what power means. This is right out of your Merriam-Webster dictionary. It's possession of control, authority, or influence over others. Or influence over others. So darkness has power. Okay? I'm just trying to make sure you see how darkness is running everything. Okay? All right, let's go to our last place here tonight. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. See, I'm glad I've been free from the power of darkness. <laughs> darkness has no control over my life. Darkness cannot influence all that kind of stuff like that. No, can't do that. Not to me. I, I am the light. All right, Colossians chapter 1, and verse started with verse 9. We got it? I'm just waiting on to go on the screen here. All right. I, I want the New King James. Let's, let's go back and go to New King James. It says, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be, may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, I want to know if you can see with your eyes what the problem is today. It's right here. He said people are not filled with the knowledge of God's will. That's why most of, most of the church still... We raise you are on. I worship you. 
worship you.
office tonight. Come on, lift your own voice tonight. Come on, lift your own voice just a moment. Just talk to him just a moment. Come on. Let him know what he means to you right now. How much he's worth to you. He's our everything and he's our all. He gave his life for us, redeemed us from the curse, gave us the blessing of Abraham, sacrificed his own life on our behalf, paid the ransom for us that we might have liberty, that we might be free tonight. bless your name in this place tonight. We glorify you and we thank you. And we give you all the praise in this place tonight. Thank you for being here. We know you're here right now. And so we rest in your presence. We're at great peace tonight. Joy abounds in your presence. Thank you that we get to enjoy your pleasures evermore now. So have your way as we continue this night. Let your word come to us tonight rich and full, unhindered and unchecked by any outside force. Let every person tonight be a hearer, a seer, and a doer of the word of God that we might be blessed in all that we do. Thank you that this word tonight will vaccinate us, inoculate us against all the onslaught of the wicked one. We know, Lord, that the wicked one cannot touch us. So we are perfectly safe here and satisfied at being in your presence. Tonight, speak, Lord, from heaven. Your servants, we hear and we will obey. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Give God one big hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then before you take your seats, before you sit down, just turn around and make eye contact with somebody you hadn't seen already and just wave at them. Hallelujah. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. We would normally be walking around hugging everybody and high-fiving and all that kind of stuff, greeting our brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. So it, 
they have all these kind of stipulations in, pay, in place right now, and so we're doing our best to comply with uh, what our government has put in place. And I'm just, again, extremely grateful today for the privilege of us being able just to come in the house of God and uh, be together, and I get to see your faces. Amen? Amen. Yeah, you know, I know uh, pastors all over the country, all over the world, they're streaming, and you know, it's wonderful that people get to see their pastor's faces, but I know as a pastor, uh, you need to see your people's faces. And so it's my privilege and, and honor to do that. And uh, good to see you tonight. Now, we're, on, we're in overtime now, right? Because the meeting was scheduled for three periods. In hockey, they do periods, three periods. And so we're in the fourth period now, amen? And so we're in overtime, and nobody mad but the devil. He can keep on being mad. We're going to see if we can make him more mad than he is now. Amen. And so we're grateful to be in the house of God tonight. Uh, to all of our guests that may be uh, here tonight, and normally we do a lot of stuff, but we thank God just for you being here with us tonight. And uh, we pr even pray for those who may be watching us online. We welcome you to sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. I was corresponding with my, uh, one of my older brothers uh, who lives in Ohio, and it's, it was, before I came to church, it was 48 degrees there. And I'm like, what in the world? So I texted him, I said, is that right? I mean, what I saw is that where he said, it's 48 and windy. And I said, praise God, we must have to be having a heat wave because it was 81 and dry here. Praise the Lord. So, amen. So welcome to sunny St. Petersburg, Florida, where God lives. Amen. See the Grace Christian Center, and I'm Pastor Jonathan Anderson. And um, those of you who are watching from all over the world, wherever you may tune in, we have a prayer line that we are uh, grateful that we were able to launch uh, two nights ago, and uh, we have prayer counselors that are standing by, able to pray for you, pray with you, uh, to get some agreement with you, to get some answers from God. And uh, that prayer line number is 727-893-8888. Pretty easy to remember. Whenever you're in trouble, 8888. Amen. And so we're glad for our prayer counselors that are standing by uh, between 8 a.m. and midnight for now, and pretty soon we'll expand that to 24 hours a day, so on and so forth. And um, we want to be a blessing to you. Amen? Yeah. Are y'all ready for the word of God tonight? Yeah. We've been chugging on along and digging into the word. And God's been telling us some good stuff. And we want to keep getting uh, what he's giving. You know, I, I learned this. When somebody gets diagnosed with some sort of a disease, a condition, if they ever go to a natural doctor, people who do natural medicine will recommend mega doses of vitamin C mega doses uh, in other words don't just drink your little orange juice you had in the morning you got to get mega doses of vitamin C because vitamin C is necessary to strengthen your immune system uh, because when you do have disease one your immune system will help to fight that that's the way God built us but then also it'll help stave off because you you become a little vulnerable it'll stave off some of the other things that'll try to come into your life so when we when we have all kind of things like we have going on in the world now We've got to get mega doses of the word. Mega doses. So good for you for giving five nights, four nights so far, messing with you, to uh, get mega doses of the word of God. You know, it's, it's, it's a little challenge to me as a pastor to look around and see on the internet, um, I'm just trying to avoid it now, uh, what people are doing, what pastors are sort of resorting to. Uh, it's, it's really become entertainment. At this point, they're sort of, it looks like they're out of word. They're out of round of revelation here three weeks in, four weeks in, whatever it is. And uh, they're doing whatever, whatever they can to kind of, kind of uh, get their views up. <laughs> um, views don't mean anything. You need to be viewing this book and then viewing yourself through the lens of this book to know who you are so you're not panicky like the rest of the world. Amen? Amen. So uh, congratulations to you all for being here for the word. All right, so let's get cranking here. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis 3, 13 and 14. Genesis 3, 13 and 14. And before we do that, we're going to make a declaration over the word of God for ourselves tonight. And our media will have it on the screen in front of you. Galatians. Y'all caught me. <laughs> caught me slipping. We're going to go to Galatians. 
after we do this declaration. Amen. Amen. Start with a G. I'll look at it. So let's declare this. Ready? Let's go. I will come to visions and revelations of who you are. Pour out your spirit upon me and make known your words unto me. Make me to understand the way of your precepts. So shall I talk of your wondrous works. Open up my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your word. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know what is the hope of your calling. Show me, Father God, great and mighty things that I know not of. Now, he's going to do that for us right now. Amen? All right. Galatians, please. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And we've been looking at this all week. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, this verse 14, we'll get to that sometime later on. The Lord leads us to do that, because that's going to deal with uh, other parts of your life, uh, the, it, really your total life, having that blessing. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. But verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So this week, we've been, our theme has been redeemed from the curse, redeemed from the curse. And so uh, I've been sharing with you how the devil just looks like he just continued to have fun with people all over the world. Uh, in this country, people are getting pretty creative. And uh, he's having fun making people miserable. If you remember, I gave you this scripture over in uh, 1 John 5. 1 John 5, verse 18 and 19 from the Passion Translation. And let's look back at what it said to us. It said, we are convinced that everyone fathered by God. How many of you all are fathered by God? That's, that was weak. How many of y'all are fathered by God? Yeah. All right. I mean, y'all sound like y'all ashamed of it, you know. <laughs> no, we have a good, good father. So we, everyone that's fathered by God does not make sinning a way of life because the Son of God protects the child of God. That's good. And the evil one cannot touch him. Now, let's look at verse 19 because 19 says, we know that we are God's children. And that the whole world, that means the rest of the world outside of us, lies under the misery and influence of the evil one. Y'all remember that? So the world, everybody outside the body of Christ who's not a child of God, is stuck under the misery and influence of the evil one. So Satan is uh, influencing everybody and making them miserable. <laughs> Last night I showed you, uh, we showed you four photos and uh, I promise I'm going to show you some more tonight. So let's, let's I just want to see, because, you know, they make everybody mask up, glove up, you know, not make everybody, but people are just doing it. They're just going, and people, if they, they're being very inventive and using their creativity to come up with whatever way they can to try to protect themselves. Now, I told you, Satan won't cast out Satan. So he's, all the things he's giving them is just really to make them look goofy. So... He will not cast out Satan. He will not work against himself. Okay? So let's look at some of the goofy things he's got people doing. Look at, let's, let's look at this photo here. Number, uh, oh, I can't see it. Okay. So newspaper and he's got, y'all can see that? Number six. Now I think that that's, that's the bag that the, your comforters come in. This is in Lowe's, right? Look, that's a Lowe's uniform. Lowe's and probably somewhere around New York. Because he got a New York Giants logo on his. So it's, it's crazy. Now, she has a mask on, you can see. But she, she got a shield and everything on. Good, good, good thing God is our strength and our shield in Jesus' name. Uh, number eight. I mean, number seven right there. Hey, he's safe, though. And a, and a hazmat suit. Last one, number eight.
Now she strapped a sponge to her face. Now, I see how y'all laughing? That's exactly what the devil and all his demons are doing. They're laughing at all these people because he's got them freaking out. They're being tormented. They're under the, the, the influence and under the misery of the, of the wicked one. And they look at us like we're crazy. I'm telling you right now, they're looking at us like we're crazy. Some lady was riding by here the other night taking pictures of photos or video, whatever she was, riding by the church. Like we're crazy. Now she's in her car, gloved up, masked up by herself. And we're the ones crazy. Now you see the kind of games the devil's playing with people? Because here's the thing. Once this is all over, the pictures are still there. It's on the internet. It's, on, it's everywhere in the world. So what's happening? I've been telling you, most people on this planet, they are ignorant of spiritual realities or their new creation realities, and that allows Satan to control them with fear and torment. Okay? That's what he's doing. He's controlling people. People think they're in control. I'm in control. No, you're not in control. Satan's controlling you. Satan's controlling you. Satan's giving you those thoughts, those ideas. Who will put a sponge? I, I had another one came to me yesterday. I, I'm not, I'm just, I just can't show that one in church. It's just too raw. I'm not. You can beg all you want. I'm not going to show you that one in church. People are doing some crazy. Matter of fact, I got a video. I'm not going to show you that video in church either. It just people are doing. Let me just, I, mean, I can describe the, the video. A lady did a video on how to take women's underwear and make face masks. Desperate times call for desperate times. Now, I want to show you something, a graph here. Because, again, we're saying most people in this world are under Satan's influence. Remember, the whole world lies under, under the sway or the influence of the wicked one, right? So I pulled up the latest stats I can find, 2015, the world's population, okay. Um, can y'all see that? Yes. Best possible, I'll try to, try to describe it for you. This is as of 2015, the world's largest religious groups. So as you can see in the red, hopefully you can see that, that it's Christian. Right. Christians are the world's largest uh, people group. 31.2% right. of the 7.3 billion people in the world at that time claimed to be Christians. So 7.3 people in the world 31% of them are Christians, which equates to about 2.3 billion people. Okay? Oh, yeah, less than a third. All right. Which means 69% of everybody else are non-Christians. That's the other 5 billion people on this planet are non-Christians. So if they're non-Christians, they're definitely under the sway of the wicked one. And the problem with many Christians is because they don't know their new creation realities, they are still living under the power of the wicked one. Are y'all hearing this? Look at 1 Corinthians 3. I'm going to show you why here. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Apostle Paul says this, And our brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So the expectation is that we are to be spiritual. But he said, I couldn't talk to you like that because you're not spiritual, you're carnal, and uh, as to babes in Christ. So what does it mean to be carnal? Carnal is a person, you're, you're, you are born again, but you're still living according to the flesh. So out of the 2.3 billion Christians are want the ones who, when they go to the hospital, that's what they put on there. Christian. Most of them are not spiritual. They're carnal. Now, let me show you something else. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8 and verse 6. 
says, for to be carnally minded. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all catching this yet? Now, he said, I couldn't speak to you as spiritual. I just speak to you as carnal, as babes in Christ. So most of the church is like the Corinthian church. They're still like babies. They're not mature yet. In fact, they're, they're not even being fed mature food. They're, most of the church is still on milk. Let me come over here. Most of the church is still on milk. Okay? Very little of the church is on meat, let alone strong meat. Definitely don't, not getting any honey. Because meat and strong meat mostly turns folk off. The moment they run into some meat, a strong meat of the word of God, they go find another church that's just ser that's serving milk. I just want to be comfortable, just want to be entertained, just, you know, something nice. Don't mess with my life, don't mess with my lifestyle, don't mess with my choices, don't mess with my walk with God, don't put responsibility on me, make the responsibility my haters, it's my, my problem is because of my haters, my, hate, my problem is because of somebody else, what, they, what they've done, it's never me, it's not me. See, they want milk, but you're not in a milk church. You're not a milk people. You're not carnal people. You're not babies anymore. You are spiritual people. The good thing about that is because it says here, if you're carnally minded, it's death. That's why people around the body of Christ are freaking out over this mess because they're carnally minded. They're still thinking like the world. They're thinking like the world. And it says, but to be spiritually minded... Have your mind set on spiritual things is life, come on, and peace. and peace. Life, zoe, and peace, irene. Zoe and irene is total life. Everything being perfect and, and full and blessed in your life. Okay? Look at verse 11 through 15. Same chapter, please. Romans 8, 11 through 15. It says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he does. Come on, help me out now. Does he dwell in you? How many of y'all are filled with the spirit of God? All right. Then it says, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life. Or I want you to read, understand like this. Continually give life. Not, this is not talking about after you die and then the rapture happens, he's going to raise you up. This is, he continually, he will continually give life to your mortal bodies. The Bible says, though the outward man perish, yet your inward man is being renewed day by day. So he's continually giving us life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in us. Got it? Keep going, please. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. We don't owe anything to the flesh to live according to the flesh. So don't live according to the flesh. Don't think like the flesh does, carnal people. He says, verse 13. Verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. hello church, I'm talking not, not y'all, I'm talking to the church that's watching online, <laughs> people that's, that's not watching who need to know this, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. I don't know how much more plain Lord can, the Lord can make that for us. But if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, your natural reaction to things, your natural way of handling things, your natural way of doing things, you will live. This, this is just plain Jane to me. Keep going, please, verse 14. For as many. For as many. He, he's tied, tied to the verse we just read. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are, come on, son, everybody say, I'm a son of God. Son of God. Now, if, you, if you're a woman, you can go and say, I'm a daughter of God. That's fine. All the men shout, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. Praise God. John 1, 12. He came to his own. His own did not receive him, but to men as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Bible says in 1 John 3, I believe it is, it says, Beloved, now, uh, uh, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we are already sons of God. We have his divine nature. We have his divine nature on the inside of us. Praise God. So those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Got it? 
or the mature sons is what that word sons literally means. It's the mature children of God. Now, immature children of God still behave just like the world. They still behave, they still operate just like the world. And that's why there's no difference you're, that you're seeing between them and the world. Verse 15, let's keep going here. Verse 15. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Let me back up. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. This is for the sons of God. You do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Come on. That's what he says over, over in uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. He, 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 he didn't give us the spirit of fear but love, power, power, love, and a sound mind. So fear is not from God. And if you are living in bondage to fear, it's proof positive that you're not a mature child of God. Now, I understand you and I, every one of us, have gone through phases and stages where we've had some kind of thing that concerned us, some, oh, some fear that, that gripped us. But when we are children of God, we know how to handle that. Okay, let me go get in the word of God. Let me make sure I, 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 I remind myself of what God said to me, and I, I get that fear out of my life quickly. I don't let fear fester in my life. If I do, I am proving, I'm saying I'm not a mature child of God. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear is torment. Perfect love. That means I've grown up to understand the love of God. Are y'all getting this here? Praise God. So I don't have a spirit of bondage again to fear, but I receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You got it? So we cry out, Abba, Father, Father God. All right? Now, so let's keep going here. I just wanted to show you, again, why you and I cannot allow ourselves to get caught up in the stupidity of what's going on there. And see, and the longer this lingers, it'll get worse and worse, not just medically, but financially. We're seeing it, and we're seeing this thing just crashing all around us, and, uh, but it's not a surprise to us because God already said this whole thing was going to crash. That's why he's been prepping us for the last several years. You got it? So, so we got to make sure we don't participate in that. Don't, don't get in the panic that's going on. Are y'all hearing me? All right. Now, we're looking at redeemed from the curse. So what is the curse? What does the curse produce? I want to go very quickly, just a reminder, just a refresher, Deuteronomy 28, 58 through 61. I want to go right to the, to the chase here. It says, but if you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, keep going, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues. You got it? Great and prolonged plagues. And serious and prolonged sicknesses. When you see that plague, think of pestilences. Think of, of uh, what, what we're seeing now is a plague going through the earth. This, this COVID, okay? It's a plague. And he said, this is what will come. Uh, and he says, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Verse 60, please. Verse 60. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt of which you are afraid, and they shall cling to you. So diseases, clinging. This is the curse. And last verse, verse 61, please. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in this book of the law, will the Lord bring on you, upon you, until you are destroyed. So everything, we've, that's, we're just making sure we establish this. Any new name that they come up with. I mean, this is all kind of stuff. Okay? It's covered. It's covered. All right? It's part of the curse. Okay? Now, we learn back in Galatians 3.13 that Christ redeemed us from the curse. You see that in your Bible? Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us. Now, if, if the word has wasn't there, would it still be past tense? 
Huh? Yeah, Christ redeemed. Because redeemed is past tense. It didn't say he is redeeming or he will redeem. It says Christ redeemed. Then he threw in just, just for good measure, has redeemed. That's double past tense. That means it's, 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 it's true, it's done, it's settled, it's, it's, it's done, done. You got it? He has redeemed us. It's already settled. Y'all got it? So Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Now, I taught you this word redeem uh, from uh, the dictionary, the dictionary's definition of the word redeem, which means, and I'm, I'm just going to summarize, give you a little bit of this, to free from what distresses or harms. Got it? So I've been, I've been free from those things, that, that distress or harm. To extricate or rescue from or help to overcome something detrimental. Isn't that good? Then it says to release from blame or debt. That's good. To free from the consequences of sin. This, this is all part of our redemption package. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Now, I will show you here that word redeem in the Strong's. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that. <laughs> I'm going to show you something here in a minute. In the Strong's, ex, uh, Sister Carolyn, Pastor Carolyn, exagorazo, exagorazo, which means to redeem by payment of a price, to recover from the power of, of another. Isn't that awesome? And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight again. Recover from the power of another to ransom or to buy off. Pay the price for us. So I told you this, and I'm, I'm, you, you should have it written down by now, that I must know for myself that I have been redeemed from the curse and it has no power in my life. Good God Almighty. I want you to see something just came to me about the Holy Ghost. Go to Revelation 5. I'm going to read verse 9 and 10. No, uh, I'm a, me, you, know, you know me. I'm going to start at verse 9. And I'll stop when I'm finished. Are you there? Revelation 9, uh, 5, verse 9. says, and they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to, to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, watch this, and have redeemed us to God. So not just redeemed from something or from someone, but to God. Now, if he redeemed us to God, he redeemed us from Satan. So when I gave you the definition of, of to redeem or recover from the power of another, that another is Satan. Got it? So we've been redeemed to God by your Jesus' blood. Out of every tribe. All across this world. And tongue and people, and nation. And watch this redemption, y'all. Check this out, verse 10. And have made us. My God, my God, my God. He didn't, he didn't just redeem you and leave you at flat. Well, you know, just do the best you can. No, he redeemed us and made us, come on, kings and priests, to our God, and we shall reign when we get to heaven. Oh, my goodness. What does your Bible say? We shall reign over yonder. No, we've been redeemed here, and we're going to reign here. We reign here now. See, before that evil 
your cruel master, Satan, reigned over us. But once we were redeemed, now we reign on the earth. And a matter of fact, we reign over him. You better know that, see? You better know that. You better know that. You better know that. Oh, my God, Lord, help me stay on point here. When God made Adam, he made man, according to Psalm number 8, a little lower than himself. So God, man, then the angels, Gabriel, Michael, Lucifer, all of them, they were all lower than man. Right? Then when man fell, Man fell below. Got it? Now, uh, Lucifer was already a fallen angel, so he fell way below. But he became, Lucifer, Satan became the god of this world. Whereas Adam had been the god of this world. Y'all follow me? So we're, it was God, Adam, angels, Lucifer, and all his angels. Then when Adam fell... Lucifer moved, and his angels, Satan moved up, not above God's angels, not above God, just above man. Man dropped to the bottom. But when the last Adam, Jesus Christ came, he came in a little lower to raise us up who were down and under and brought us up. So he put us back over Lucifer, back over the angels and just a little lower than God. You got it? So we reign on the earth over Satan. That's what Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 could say this statement. Behold, I give you authority over all power of the wicked one, the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because man gets raised back up. Are you following me? So go back to Revelation 5 here and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on, on earth. We shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. We do reign on the earth now. Boy. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. That's 10 million right there. And, and thousands of thousands, that's millions and millions. So God's got millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of angels. Hundreds of millions. Some estimates billions of angels. Now only 2.3 billion of us on this planet even claim to be Christians. He gives his angels charge. Come on over you. Now look at verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive. Now this is part of your redemption package here. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and, I'm, I'm sorry, and honor and glory and blessing. So that's part of our redemption package right there. You got this here. So everybody say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. And I know it. And, I know it. And, Satan and Satan has no power in my life. Now I taught you that last night. Uh, uh, the first thing I gave you was I have been I've, I am delivered from the power of Satan. I am delivered from the power of Satan. Now back, let's go back to Acts twenty six eighteen, please. Acts twenty six eighteen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Acts twenty six and verse uh, eighteen. This is God, the Lord speaking to to Paul. Paul recounting about when the Lord spoke to him and gave him his mission. Verse 18 says, to open their eyes, this is eyes of, of sinners of the world, in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So notice he said, to open their eyes in order to. So once they get their eyes open, some revelation here, now they can turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Now remember I taught you this word, uh, you know Satan. Satanas, I remember that one. Satanas, which from the Greek means adversary. We know him. We have an adversary, the devil. But then this part I wanted to focus on, and we did focus on last night, was by his demons, 
he is able to take possession of men and inflict them with diseases. That's what he's doing right now. That's what he's always been doing. He's a murderer from the beginning, Jesus said in John chapter 8, right? And, but notice his last part, the glorious part, by God's assistance, he is overcome. overcome. Okay? Now, give me Acts 10, 38, please, in the contemporary English version. Because, again, by God's assistance, he is overcome. He comes and puts, inflicts people with diseases. Everybody's scared right now of the disease caused by coronas, coronavirus, right? The disease is COVID-19, right, caused by coronavirus. Everybody's scared of that disease. Well, it only happens if Satan is able to take possession and afflict you with it. But by God's assistance, he is overcome. So whether you've not been infected or whether you've already been infected, if you get God's assistance, you can overcome. Now, Acts 10, 38 in the CEV says this. God gave the Holy Spirit and power to Jesus, of Naz Jesus from Nazareth. He was with Jesus. God was with Jesus as he went around doing good and healing everyone who was under the power of the devil. So people needed healing because they were under the power of the devil. Remember I referenced Luke 16 last night, that woman who had been, uh, uh, that spirit of infirmity, who she had been bowed over 18 years, could no wise, in no way raise herself up. And when Jesus spoke to her and said, woman, you are loose from your infirmity, and immediately she was made straight, she stood up straight, and the Bible says, he said, the people got upset, and he said, should not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, should not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, now that's Galatians 3.14. Being a daughter of Abraham, be loose who was bound 18 years by Satan. So she was under Satan's power for 18 years. And she, would not have, she didn't get loose in church. By the church folk. <laughs> she got loose by Jesus. Because the church folk would have let her keep coming to church. Matter of fact, they got mad because he did it on the Sabbath. You interrupt with our church service, it's a Sabbath day, you shouldn't be doing no work, and he healed this lady, and you wrong for that. They wanted to kill him, they got mad about that. Church folk, all oh, religious folk, uh, let me call them that, religious folk always get mad at the anointing. Always get mad at the prophetic. Always get mad at the true move of God. So, he healed Everyone, everybody say everyone. everyone. Jesus healed everyone who was under the power of the devil. That's Acts 10:38 CEV. He healed everyone who was under the power of the devil. Now, wonderful for us, but most of these 2.3 billion Christians on the planet think that that was then and it's not now yet Hebrews 13 verse 8 says Jesus Christ is the same come on yesterday come on today and so he ne he's never going to change so if he healed people back then who are under the power of the devil he'll heal people today who are under the power of the devil and he'll heal people tomorrow who are under the power of the devil he won't change. He didn't run out of power. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. All right, now, let's move on to this next section here. All right? It is already late. My goodness. I was trying to have y'all out at 8 o'clock every night. Well, let's just finish. Let's, let's, let's. Scratch, we can scratch that. <laughs> now, last night we saw, I taught you that I am delivered from the power of Satan. Tonight, I want to show you that I am, you are, delivered from the power of darkness. I'm delivered from the power of darkness. 
Now, if we look back at Acts 26, verse 18, again, part of Paul's mission was to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. Open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light. The good news is, is that if you are in darkness, you can go from darkness to light. So even though there are 5 billion plus people out in the world who are still in darkness, we still pray and we still evangelize in the hopes that they will be turned from darkness to light. God is still in a turning business, praise God, to turn them from darkness to light. And he's still in the healing business and the saving business and the making rich business. He's still doing it today. To turn people from darkness to light, we know that because you and I were in darkness. Put uh, Ephesians 5, verse 8 on the screen, please. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. You write it down. Listen to this. It says, this is Paul talking to the church. This is the church folk. For you were once darkness. Notice he didn't say you were once in darkness. He said you were darkness. <laughs> you can look at King James. It's going to say the same. You were once darkness. Not just in darkness. Not just stuck in darkness. You were darkness. How many of y'all remember you were darkness? Boy, we were darkness. So this darkness that we've been delivered from, we were it. That's how I know he can deliver folk from it. Because I didn't get saved in the Bible days. I didn't get saved when Jesus Christ was walking this planet. I didn't get saved under Paul's ministry or Peter's ministry or Philip's ministry or Stephen's ministry. I got saved in 1989. The year of our Lord. February uh, 12, 1989, I got saved. I turned from darkness. He says, but now you are light in the Lord. So we were darkness, but we are now light in the Lord. Now watch this instruction. Walk as children of light. If, let's say, uh, who's here? Sister Anna, I'm going to borrow her, Sister Anna. Sister Anna, you were born in Haiti. Am I right? Okay. Now, Sister Anna, born in Haiti, but you, she's lived here in uh, the United States for many years. Right? Now, so let's say, just for this, this reference, she was Haiti, but now she is United States. So she has to walk as an American. Which means that there may be some laws, some ordinances that were in place in Haiti that do not apply here. There may have been some liberties that they had there that are not free to do here. There may have been, and on the other side, there may have been some things that they couldn't do there that they can now do here. So when you and I are no longer darkness and in the light, we have to shift our mindset to I'm um, now in the light and I walk as a child of light. So what I was bound to in the darkness, I'm no longer bound to in the light. What I was controlled by in the darkness, I'm no longer controlled by in the light. Things I was thought I was free to do in darkness, I'm not free to do in the light. You understand? It's a new system. It's a new regime. It's a new administration. So I was darkness. Everybody say, I was darkness. But now I'm light in the Lord. And I have to now walk as a child of the light. Are you seeing this here? So we used to be darkness. But now we're, now let, let's, let's look at something. He says, but now you are light in the, Lord, in the Lord. So you are not supposed to be light in the Lord. You understand this? We're supposed to be light. Not just in the light. I don't, I, come on, catch me now. Remember, we, we weren't just in darkness. We were darkness. We were part of the darkness. We will make it dark wherever we went.
I brought the darkness. Right? We could have went gone into a peaceful place. Before we left, it was a mess. Tell the truth. Come on. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. We were darkness. But now, he didn't say now you are in light. He said now you are light. In the Lord. So now then, wherever I go, I'm supposed to bring light. Because I, I am light. I am light. I am light. Now that is some meat. That's some mature word to declare to people. I am light. We used to grow up singing, walk in the light, beautiful light. The dew drops up. Shine all around us. Jesus. Jesus said, before he left, he said, you are the light. Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus, hit, in fact, he put it this way. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. He said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But he's no longer in the world. He said, you're the light of the world. Are you catching this here? So we are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. Now I'm showing you here, we've been delivered from the power of darkness. Go to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you are a chosen generation. <laughs> a royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. Now King James, I like how King James puts it. A peculiar people. Peculiar. How many of y'all know you're peculiar? Peculiar uh, in common everyday vernacular means strange. That person sure is peculiar. Strange, a little weird. They're a little, right, they're a little touched, you know. Elevated on guard to the top, you know what I'm saying? It's, the light's on when nobody's home. That's the stuff like that, peculiar. <laughs> right? But, but, this peculiar literally means for us, we stand out. Not that we're, um, something's wrong with us. It's just that we're different than the world around us. Many times I've talked to people and, and people say, you know, give their opinion about something. I say, well, it's not that whether it's right or wrong. It's just different. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't mean sin. I'm talking about things like, you know, some pe people like, people like, um, butter on their grits and somebody, somebody else might, they might like sugar on their grits that's right. That's right. and they say that's wrong it's not wrong it's just different like I don't, I don't get folk eating cream of wheat what is that that's some northern thing up there right that's wrong it ain't wrong it's just different I remember one, one year, one year we had gone to Frankfurt for the, uh, one of the camp meetings or something like that we were gone to, and we were all sitting there and, and dinner, and, and they, they always take care of us. I encourage everybody, you know, go this year, as long as they lift all this stupid stuff they got with the government. Let's all go this year. And they take very good care of everybody when we go to Frankfurt for the camp meeting, and they feed everybody every, every day, and uh, full meal, the uh, appetizer, uh, main course, and a dessert. Remember one time we were there at night, the evening, and they served dessert. dessert. Dessert came out, and it was pumpkin pie. Now, all of us, <laughs> all of us from down here, sitting around the table, they, they, go, they come by, what you like? They come, they get real close. Would you like some pumpkin pie? 
and you just go right, just, I can just wash down the whole room. Wow. They, they must be watching their calories. No. We just don't eat pumpkin pie. Now, if you ask some, some sweet potato pie, we can get down. We can get down some sweet potato pie, but pumpkin pie? Right? But, you know, they don't know. We're not picking on them. You understand? That's just, they're just very gracious. I, I really encourage everybody to go and be a part of that. But just, it's not, not bad. It's just different. You got it? So what happens is people look at you as a Christian, a, a real Christian. And, you know, because a lot of Christians, they don't, they don't see no difference. But I'm talking about you real, true Christians that I'm looking at who really love God and serve God and want to please him with everything you have, everything you do, you want to please God. You are going to look peculiar. You look peculiar in church in a time like this. And it's a Thursday. It's already strange being in church at nighttime. It ain't Sunday morning. You went to church during the week? The whole week? Y'all been meeting every night? See, you're peculiar. But watch this. He says that you should show forth the praises. When you're peculiar, you're going to show forth praises. Hallelujah. Watch this. The praises of him who has called you. Hey, come out of that darkness. I'm glad he called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I was trapped in darkness. I was stuck in darkness. I was controlled by darkness. I was under the power of darkness. But he called me. Jonathan. Come forth. And I heard him. So we we supposed to show forth something here. Show forth his praises. What 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 are you showing? What are you showing? It's all right if people, uh, you know, talk about me and ostracize me and all that kind of good stuff. And it's all right. I, it's all right if I'm peculiar. Oh, you go to that strange church. You know y'all do already. I'm just telling you what, what, what the folk are saying about you. You go to that strange church. People over there talking to other languages and all that kind of stuff. And falling on the flow and all that stuff. Yeah, they bring that white man in here to preach. Long hair, white suit, and a good tar. You better stay from around now. That's what I say. You better stay from around now. No, you better get yourself down here. You better get yourself down here with this peculiar bunch who are showing for the praise of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So we were under the power of darkness. Now, let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 here. Ephesians 6. I'm glad to be in the light. I'm glad to be the light. Ephesians 6. And I'm going to start at verse 10 and go through verse 12. How many of you are familiar with this passage here when it, when it says, Finally, my brethren, finally, my brethren, and sisterin, <laughs> be strong in the Lord and in the power 
of his might. So there's power that comes from the Lord's might. Now watch. Put on the whole armor of God that you, yourself, may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes or the deceits or the tricks of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now watch these, watch these realms, these ranks of demonic powers here. Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. It's getting higher here. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. It's gone from, from low rank all the way up. Powers against rulers of the darkness of this age. My Bible has a little note by the darkness and it says rulers of this darkness. Rulers of this darkness. So this darkness is still here. What's got everybody in, a, in an uproar is this darkness. And I just want to just make sure I, I, I make sure you are awake. I want you all to be woke Christians. That this darkness here is not the virus. This darkness is what they're doing while people are focusing on the virus. See, it's what's going on Why they got everybody looking at the virus. They're moving over here. Financial reset across the, the world. Global repositioning across the world. They're setting things up to, to kill off a lot of people. When we read in Proverbs 30, there's a generation with the sharp teeth who devour the poor off the earth. See, so everybody worry about the coronavirus, and, but, but, you know, it's all right. We'll stay home as long as you send us our little check. We'll stay home. That little check ain't going to do jack for you. That little check ain't going to change your life. My wife was celebrating away here about uh, uh, the article she read about one, one guy. This, I won't say his name. This one guy was talking about when you get, get your check. I, get, I think he was in... Was he in partnership with the president on this? Okay. And talking about when you get your check, spend it. He said, don't save it. Spend it. Make yourself happy. Do, so, do something to brighten your future. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I was concerned. I, again, I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm not watching the news. I've, been, I've just been fasting the land before the Lord. And I, so I've not seen any news or anything. But my wife shared with me about how, uh, I guess, the mayor, uh, our mayor, which we thank God for our mayor. But, you know, he, he's, he's doing the best he can. He, he, he put out a video the other night about telling all the people in St. Petersburg, hey, smile, you know, get your chin up, be happy, you know, uh, do, do what you can. He said, and stop watching all this news about coronavirus all day long. And I want to say, but, Mayor, you all did this. When you wanted people to shut down and now people don't know how they're going to eat, you want them to smile and be happy? They're not Christians. How they gonna know how to smile and be happy? And the Bible, the Bible says in Matthew six that after these things the Gentiles seek. So the only things Gentiles think about is how am I gonna eat? How am I gonna drink? How am I gonna have rent? How am I gonna have clothes? So I, I want to be happy. I mean, I understand the sentiment, but it, are you gonna be happy? You can't. You don't know how you're gonna eat next week. And then the other people on the, on the top want to say, well, when you get your, get your check, just don't save it. Spend it. Make yourself happy. Right. You ready? You're going to spend it. Back at Walmart? You going to eat $1,200 worth of checkers? I mean, what you going to do? What are you going to spend it? See, what's happening is the devil wants you focused on this 
while his little um, Luciferian society he has in the background who runs all the world banking, all the world systems, they are setting up their thing. And what he's doing is he's trying to expedite his, his regime, but he can't do it till we leave. He can't do it till we leave. And we're not leaving until, as, as Dad has, has taught all last week, until the restitution of all things. Christ's not coming back from some broke down, sorry, sappy looking church, but for a glorious church. Glory to God. So I'm back in Ephesians 6. I got caught up. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Notice again what it says here. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So people don't see this because this is all spiritual. All they see is, all they see is a natural. And people are responding to the natural. And that means, or it's because they don't see what's behind it all. That Satan and his regime have a whole plan. Oh my God, oh my God. The nations have a plan. I was, I was sitting there in prayer, speaking to the Lord this morning, and he took my, took, he said, go right back to Psalm 33. Put this on the screen. Psalm 33, verse 10 and 11. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I got so encouraged by this because I know the devil's up to something. But watch this. Watch this. It says, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. See, the nations are planning something. Again, how do you get every nation on the planet to be doing the same thing right now? Every nation doing the same thing? Everybody doing the same thing? They have plans. But your Bible says that the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. So everything the devil's got planned against all of us, against all these people, God's going to crush it all right now. He's going to get himself some glory in this earth before Jesus Christ returns. Verse 11, verse 11, watch this. Why? This is what I love. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. He, the plans of his heart. So while, the, while everybody's looking at Corona and the devil's working his, his scheme over here, God still got a master plan that those of us who have an ear those of us who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, we're not looking at what Corona's doing over here. We're not looking at what the devil's doing over here. We're looking at what God is doing right here. Are y'all hear what I'm saying to you? That's why I'm not caught up in what Corona's doing. I, I, I'm not keeping count of the numbers anymore. I don't, I'm not, I'm not. It's a distraction. Not keeping up with what all the governments are doing is a distraction. It's, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Y'all got it? Oh, my goodness. All right, let me hurry. Man. Give me verse 12, please, uh, in the easy-to-read version. I want you to see these rulers of darkness, this power. Ephesians, yeah, Ephesians 6, please, verse 12 in the easy-to-read version. Glory to God. Everybody say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is, this is just good, man, what God is doing uh, for his people. Hallelujah. All right. It says here, our fight is not against people on earth. We are fighting against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this world's darkness. We are fighting against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly places. We're fighting against them. Which means we are on opposing sides. Which means we've been already delivered from the power of that darkness. We are fighting them to rid others from their power. That's why, that's why we're, we're meeting tonight. That's why Apostle Derber is preaching every night till they open them doors of their church. That's why the real men and women of God aren't sitting there playing stupid games on the internet 
and trying to entertain folk every day, reading baby stories and mukbangs and all that kind of stupid stuff. No, they're preaching the gospel, getting a prophetic utterance from God, speaking what thus said the Lord, so people can be delivered from the power of darkness today. Spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly places. Give me the same verse, please, media, in the Passion Translation. The same verse in the Passion. Let's see what it says to us here in the Passion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says, your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings. Hand-to-hand. Y'all know a hand-to-hand combat. Throw them hands. Y'all remember we used to throw them hands. See, that, today they don't throw, they don't throw no hand to hand. They bang, bang, bang. Back in the day, we would throw them hands. Your hand to hand comeback is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realm. For watch this, watch this. This is, what, this is what I want you to see. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. So we try to figure out, why are people going crazy? What, what are they doing? People killing, you know, their own children and people, you know, doing horrific things. What? They're under uh, this powerful class of demon gods that are holding them in bondage. And they, they cannot be freed except somebody go to battle. That's what you're here for. Are y'all hearing this? All right, Luke 22 real quick. Luke 22, 53. Give it, give it, give it to me in the uh, CEV for sake of time. Luke 22, 53 in the CEV. Jesus talking. I just want you to see this here. Man. Jesus said to uh, the people there, he says, I was with you every day in the temple and you didn't arrest me, but this is your time and darkness is in control. King James, New King James, it says the power of darkness. But what I want you to see with that, the power of darkness means that darkness is in control. That's what's controlling the atmosphere. That's what's controlling all the airwaves. That's what's controlling the internet. Darkness is in control. Y'all hear me? Now, the word power means, from the dictionary, possession of control, authority, or influence over others. That's what power means. This is right out of your Merriam-Webster dictionary. It's possession of control, authority, or influence over others. All right? Write that down. Possession of control, authority, or influence over others. So darkness has power. Okay? I'm just trying to make sure you see how darkness is running everything. Okay? All right, let's go to our last place here tonight. Colossians chapter 1. God's will. And when you don't know God's will, you cannot have faith. Because faith begins, Brother Kenneth Hagin said this years ago, faith begins where the will of God is known. So you have to know God's will before you can apply faith. So people today, if they're scared, they're freaking out, it's because they don't know God's will. So they can have no faith. So he says, so I'm praying for you, and this is what we need to pray for other people, is that we would all be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom, and watch this, natural understanding. What? Now, what do you think people are filling up with when they're at home watching CNN all day? Natural understanding. Now, y'all not going to like this part. But when a pain or symptom hits your body, you go to write the WebMD. And you're going to self-diagnose. You're filling yourself with natural understanding. But natural understanding will not heal your body. You must be filled with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 
I need to understand spiritual things. I need to understand the spiritual realm. It's more real than this natural realm. In fact, if you understand it, everything in this natural realm came out of the spiritual realm. For by faith, Hebrews 1, right around verse 3, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are not seen were not made with, by things which do appear. Are you hearing this here? So everything in this natural realm appeared first from the spiritual realm. But if you fill yourself up with natural understanding and not spiritual, spiritual understanding, you'll be captured by the power of darkness. Are you with me on this here? All right, keep going, please. Verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in what? Every good work. And increasing in what? Increasing in what again? Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Oh my goodness. I'm qualified. Employment. But I found out I qualify for the inheritance. That system will never crash. God, God has never had a crash on his server in heaven. His website has never gone down. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know that I just applied. I'm a, and I'm qualified to partake of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, many translations, if you read that uh, this same verse, it'll say in the... Uh, kingdom of light in the kingdom of light so you and I are in the kingdom of light now watch verse 13 Christ has redeemed us yes. redeemed his past tense he said he has delivered delivered his past tense but for good measure he put has he has past tense delivered us past tense from the power of darkness so I am delivered, read dark, causing all kind of ruckus in the earth. Oh, y'all hear me tonight. But I have been delivered. Say it, I've been delivered from the power of darkness. And he didn't just leave me right there just out of, out of that, but he conveyed me or translated me into the kingdom of the son of his love. The son, the king, yes. I'm in the kingdom of the son of his love. It's in here. Y'all know what a trek is? See, if you're not a trek, you don't know what it is. If you are a trek, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Live long and prosper. Star Trek. And they had this uh, room that they go to, the transporter room. When they wanted to move from their ship to a planet somewhere, they go in that, uh, in that room and stand on one of those pads there and say, beam me up, Scotty, or beam me down, Scotty. Just, all of a sudden, their body would just like, dissolve, and then they'd, they'd reappear somewhere else. Or if they were somewhere else on another planet and there was a big monster about to eat them, they said, beat me up Scotty, beat me up Scotty. And all of a sudden they leave where they were and reappear back on the ship. Beat me up Scotty. See, people have taken beat me up to mean something about smoking weed. No, beat me up was from Star Trek. They beaming up. No, no, no. Beaming up is to be transported, translated from where you were. So when they be in danger on planet Oompa Noompa and they got translated, they were no longer in danger. You were, you were in danger under the power of darkness. But you've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, the son of his love, which means you are no longer in danger. Oh, 
boy, 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 that's good right there. Hallelujah. So that means that that darkness has no more power over me, no more control over me, no more authority over me, and no more influence over my life. So the devil can't, uh, he can't scare me anymore. And he sure enough can't keep making an idiot out of me. No, because I'm not in his kingdom anymore. See, if I, if I was in his kingdom, he'd have um, rule over me. Let me, let me, let me get, say this one last thing here. If you were uh, an ambassador from Botswana, I know what Botswana is? Okay. To the U.S., as an, an ambassador, you have something called diplomatic immunity. Y'all ever heard of this? Yes, sir. Diplomatic immunity. You read 2 Corinthians 5, we are ambassadors for Christ. Yes, sir. As an ambassador from another country to the U.S., you have diplomatic immunity, which means that the, uh, they really can't, the U.S. government, the law enforcement, really can't touch you because they don't have any authority over you. You're just visiting here. You're here on official business. But you're not under the U.S.'s authority. So if you and I then are ambassadors for Christ, we are here visiting, we are here on official business, then this ruling authority in this earth has no authority over us. We have diplomatic immunity. You can't touch me. So do what you want with all your little viruses. Do what you want with all your little depression, all your little songs. Call back. Hey. Oh, no. hey. Power of Satan tonight in your life. When you, when you get that way, he can't make you a Christ. I am the Christ. And Satan has no power over me. I didn't want to say that again. I am the body of Christ. And Satan has no power over me. For I, evil with good. For I overcome evil with good. I am of God. I am of God. And I have overcome Satan. And I have overcome Satan. For greater is he that is in me. For greater is he that is in me. One more time. For greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. I will fear no evil. For the Lord is with me. His word and his spirit, they comfort me. I am far from oppression. Say it again, I am far from oppression. For fear does not come near me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper. For I'm like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I am delivered from the evils of this present world. For it is the will of God concerning me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Hattie, come up here. I wanted Sister Hattie to share a testimony uh, that she reminded me of last night. The power of knowing the Lord's will and understanding who you are in him and how God delivers you from the power of Satan and from the power of darkness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why I praise and I shout so much because I have a reason to. Because two years ago, the devil was trying to overtake me, and he was trying to overtake my mind. I've been healed in my body from pain and everything else, but he was, had one thing to attack me on. It was my mind, and I need my mind. So I stepped the pastor and told him what was going on with me, and he gave me the scripture. Yeah. Hebrews 9, 13, 14. Come on. Okay. 
Can you put that up? Come on. <laughs> I take that strip to the grave with me because it delivered me. Because I couldn't sleep. I was scared to go to sleep with the light off. I had to sleep with the TV on, tossing and turning all night long. No and rest. I come to a point where I was sleeping on the couch, wouldn't get in the bed no more. Wow. Until I got the script, hold of the scripture right here. Come on. And I read that scripture, and I still read it because it delivered me. Because he was trying to overtake my mind. And I got into that scripture, and it delivered me. I, I go to sleep at night. I don't toss and turn no more. I get peace. I didn't have peace in my mind. He was trying to take. That's the only thing he had to fight me with. Because everything else had been healed in me. But he was trying to take my mind, making me live by my past. But I wasn't going to do that no more because I was done with that. And I thank God that I was delivered. I was in darkness. I was in darkness for a long time. Right, I, that world. I was in darkness. Because I was tore up. From the sole of my head to my feet, I was tore up. Everything was tore up on me. Pain all in my body. Teeth all out. I was a mess when I came here. Broke, disgusted, <laughs> everything. But now I'm healed. And I'm changed. Trust him all the way. Yes. You got to trust in him yes. and believe in him and know who he is. Because no. no. he's the almighty living God. Yes, he is. That will deliver you, yes. redeem you, yes. and heal you, yes. and change you. Yes. It may not look like it, but it is. Yes. Yes. It is. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give God a praise for that tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He will. He'll deliver you. He will redeem you. God is faithful to do it. Amen. Now we're getting ready to close out in prayer here tonight. And uh, again, we, we've, 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 we've dug so deep. And uh, God has shown us so many things. And I know that we are uh, stronger now than we've ever been yes. in the Lord. Um, again, those of you that are that are at home, or even you, anytime you need to, call our prayer line, 727-893-8888, and somebody will pray with you, pray for you, agree with you uh, for God to do for you what, he's, what he did for Sister Hattie. Yes. <laughs> People brought all around this country, this world can't sleep. Yes. Scared to lay down. You don't need to be like that. The Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. And so call that prayer line. Let somebody pray with you, pray for you. And uh, you'll, you'll come out on top, I guarantee it. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m. And we'll hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Amen? Chris, are you praying? You got it? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. We have been delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Father God, we glorify you and magnify you in this place. You are wonderful and great. You are a mighty God. Hallelujah. We, we glorify you, O God, for your strength and your power, O God. We thank you, O God, for your love, O God. For your love, O God, when we didn't love you back, O God. You loved us and you saved us and you redeemed us when we were at war with you, O God. So we thank you, O oh God, that we can stand tonight, O oh God, free from the power of darkness, O oh God, free from the power of Satan in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, that we are filled with your spirit, O oh God. Your spirit is the guarantee, O oh God, of things to come, O oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Tonight, Father God, that we have life residing on the inside of us. We thank you, O oh God, that rivers of living water will flow out of us, out of this place in the name of Jesus. 
Father God, we thank you for the revelation that we are redeemed from the curse, oh God. That, Father God, no longer do we have to tolerate, oh God, the things that from the enemy, oh God. No longer do we have to tolerate the harassment from the evil one, oh God. No longer. So we thank you tonight, oh God, that we are a free people, that we are a liberated people. And because of our freedom, oh God, we can stand in the gap for others, oh God. We can intercede for this nation. We can intercede for this city, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the government in this city, oh God. And we command them to be blessed now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you open up the eyes of their understanding, their enlightened their eyes of understanding, oh God. That, Father God, that they would get a revelation of who you are. That they would get a revelation of the blessing, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we declare what you declare, that we are the centerpiece in this city, oh God. We are the centerpiece in this region, oh God. We are a city set on the hill. And I thank you, oh God, that kings will come to the brightness of our rising in the name of Jesus. Father God, we cover this city with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, that you have given us authority to stay the hand of the enemy. So we declare over this city, coronavirus, you must go now in the name of Jesus. Panic, you must go now in the name of Jesus. We command life forevermore in this city in the name of Jesus. Father God, we bless every business in this city, oh God. We bless the economy in this city, oh God. And we thank you that, Father God, the enemy will not have his way. We bind every power and principality hovering over this region in the name of Jesus. We bind the powers of darkness hovering over this region in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God. And we recognize the blood of Jesus. We honor this season. We honor this time, oh God, this time of Passover, oh God. We thank you that the spotless price, the spotless blood, the spotless sacrifice of our Savior Jesus was shed for the remission of our sins, oh God. And so by the blood of Jesus, we cover this city. By the blood of Jesus, we command this city to prosper in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God that you've given us a covenant of life and peace, oh God. That, Father God, we don't have to go outside of you, oh God, to find life and peace. Thank you, oh God. I thank you, oh God, now that you're strengthening the hands of your people. That, Father God, family members, friends, co-workers can come and ask, and, Father God, we'll open up our hands and allow them to take as much as they need in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you. Your word says that you wish above all that we prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper, oh God. So we stand before you tonight a prosperous people, a whole people, Father God. I thank you, oh God, that there will be no loss in the kingdom. There will be no loss of resources. There will be no loss of life. There will be no loss of sanity. There will be no loss in the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that you raised up a standard against it now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that you're building up. You're raising up, oh God, an exceeding great army in this place. An army that's full of boldness, boldness, oh God, full of courage, oh God. That, Father God, the gates of hell will not prevail, O oh God. That, Father God, we would take it on, O oh God. We would be offensive, O oh God. And come against the enemy. We declare war on the enemy now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment against us, we condemn it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we declare that the earth will be filled with your glory. That the earth, oh God, will be filled with the fragrance of your knowledge, oh God. Father God, I thank you that in this time, faith is arising in your people. I command your people to live by faith. 
the just, they live by their faith, oh God. You said by faith and patience, we inherit the promise, oh God. So, Father God, I declare and decree that your people are strong. They're not fainting in the way. There's no feebleness among us in the name of Jesus. We're not weary in doing well in the name of Jesus. Father God, we answer the call to fight the good fight of faith. There's nothing too big for you. With God, there's nothing that's impossible, oh God. No matter what the challenge, no matter what the world is saying, no matter what the news is saying, oh God, we trust in you. You are the solid rock. You are a sure foundation. Hallelujah. Our hope is founded on you. Our faith is founded on you. Our trust is founded on you. Thank you, oh God, that you will receive glory during this time. That during this time, the kingdom will advance. That during this time, the kingdom will prosper. That during this time, your word, word will go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I declare that the airways be open to all of your sent ones, oh God. I declare, oh God, that every door that you did not shut, I command it open now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you declare that this is a season of open doors too, oh God. That this is the year of vision manifestation. That this is an era of flourishing. This is our time of exaltation. Father God, we won't let go of any of that, oh God. And we thank you for every door that is being opening open to your people now. We thank you, oh God, that you prepared them for the opportunities that will be presented to them. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we cover the man of God in this place. We cover Pastor Kim in this place. We cover their family. Father God, we thank you that there is a hedge of protection around them. In the name of Jesus. That the evil one cannot have his way. No weapon formed against them will prosper in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, that you're surrounding them with your favor, oh God, as a shield. I thank you that God, that by, they, by their faith, oh God, that they prosper. That by their faith, that they are well and whole in their body. That by faith, oh God, that they are sound in their mind, oh God. That by faith, they walk and operate in power, oh God, and in your might and in your strength, oh God. And Father God, you declared in your word that those that diligently seek you, you will reward. So Father God, we loose rewards on them now in the name of Jesus. Father God, let your riches and glory overtake them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we, we honor you in this place. We thank you, O oh God, that you have received glory out of your people and that you will continue to receive glory out of your people. We thank you, O oh God, that you've kept us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you, O oh God, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that Father God, you have told us, O oh God, that we are light in this world. So Father God, have your way in every person in this room. Have your way in our children. Have your way in our families, O oh God. Receive glory, honor, and praise from your people. We thank you, O oh God, for what you're doing in this season. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're getting stronger and stronger every day. So we come back tomorrow night for the final. And uh, we'll be back again at 7 o'clock p.m. And uh, we'll be done as soon as the Lord finishes. Amen. Amen. And then we'll enjoy a great uh, Saturday off. I know there's a rehearsal Saturday. At what time is that? 11 a.m. for the uh, Resurrection Sunday production. And then we'll be back on Sunday morning at uh, 10 o'clock for pre-service prayer. 10.30 a.m. is our Resurrection Sunday celebration. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Consider yourselves as missed. Be blessed. Have a great day. Amen.